NVIDIA is happy with the way the 40 series is going, and the 4090 Ti might be coming soon. So will the ROG Ally. You want that? And do you want AMD to destroy NVIDIA? Because that that actually might be coming. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, April 17th, 2023. We're going to start off today talking about a report that's come out regarding NVIDIA's RTX 40 series production. This was an interview being given about details regarding the Ada Loveless architecture, and it turns out that NVIDIA thinks that everything is just going fine and smoothly with regards to the 40 series and that they're not going to be upping production, which does seem to be in line with where we see things happening at retail especially with the RTX 4070 launch. If you go and look, there's plenty of stock everywhere. Our local micro center has over 100 GPUs in stock. And if you go ahead and look for any other type of GPU that's out on the market, 4070 Ti, 4080, or even 4090, there's still plenty of stock out there. So this does seem to be a change of pace from what it was with the RTX 30 series, where there just simply wasn't enough to meet demand. It seems like demand potentially might be lower with the RTX 40 series, especially as we discussed in Friday's episode of Hot News, the 4070 launch that we attended at Microsoft Center. Didn't seem to have a whole lot of confidence behind it. There was only one other person at the store open for that GPU when there was dozens of people for the 4090. There was a lot of people for the X3D launches on the CPUs. To not see anybody there for what's supposed to be the mainstream GPU launch of this generation was quite concerning. So we'll have to wait until NVIDIA comes out and gives us some numbers regarding what's going on. But it seems like everything's fine according to them. They're making all the money that they want to, especially in the AI sector. What do they need to care about consumers at retail for? But you know what I care about? Today's video is sponsored. Today's video is sponsored by Morgan & Morgan. Now, I fortunately have never been in a serious car accident myself, but I know friends and family members who have. I have a distinct memory of being a child and being in a courtroom with my dad for an accident where he was hit by a distracted driver. And the thought of having to go through all of that just seems overwhelming, but not with Morgan & Morgan. They've modernized the injury law process so you can submit a claim and have it reviewed by a lawyer without ever having to leave the couch. You can sign documents, upload pictures, share medical records, and doctor bills all from your phone. You can even text message your attorney and case manager without having to go into an office. When you're injured in an accident, hiring an attorney is one of the first things that you should do. And with Morgan & Morgan, submitting a claim is so easy. More than 3 million people have trusted Morgan & Morgan when they were injured in an accident. And if you're ever in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can submit a claim in eight clicks or less, and you can have America's largest injury law firm fighting for you. You can get started at forthepeople.com forward slash UFD or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell. Big thanks again to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring today's video. Now let's continue on with some NVIDIA information because we're getting details out about the RTX 4060 Ti, which is going to be the lower end version of the RTX 4070. The colorful version of this graphics card is getting some details with somebody who maintains the tech power of database posting that the colorful iGame 4060 Ti might have an overclocked clock speed of 2,580 megahertz, which is just a very minimal 1.3% overclock. And it lines up with what we've heard about the 4060 Ti. TI before. It is going to be a very bad graphics card. They have to price this correctly. It's not even going to have a full 16 lane interface on PCI Express Gen 4 compared to the 3060 Ti or 3060. It also is going to have fewer CUDA cores than the 4060 Ti. The clock speed is going to be increased. The teraflops are going to be increased, but the memory bus and the memory bandwidth are going to be lower than even the RTX 3060, which is just, this is bad. It really did seem like consumers are rejecting the RTX 4070 for some of the shenanigans it's pulling. The 4060 and 4060 Ti seem to be even a little bit worse than that. So I wanna hear what you think about the 4060 Ti and where it's coming. The teraflops are there, but everything else is worse. Does that make you happy or not? What price would this graphics card have to launch at for you to show up to buy it day one? Let me know down below. But while the 4060 Ti doesn't seem all that interesting, what seems to be a very interesting move is the fact that Computex has announced that CEO of Nvidia, Jensen Wong, is gonna be giving the headline speech at the opening of Computex. This has been an honor that's been bestowed to Lisa Su for many years. I cannot remember a single time that Jensen's ever done it. He's been president at Computex with NVIDIA, and in fact, I was at one of his keynote speeches where he tossed out sandwiches to all of the tech press, but never the headline. So this raises a few questions. I've seen suggestions and theories out there that this could potentially mean that we're getting the launch of a new consumer graphics card, because that's what Computex traditionally focuses on. This is not going to be like their GTC event where they're focusing on AI. I believe they launched the 1070 around the time of Computex 
RTX back in 2016, 2017, whenever that happened. We could expect something like the RTX 4090 Ti to be presented or potentially even the flagship RTX Titan Ada, which is supposed to be like five slots and have 48 gigabytes of VRAM. It's gonna be absolutely wild. It's really interesting. We're working to confirm behind the scenes that we are going to Computex. So I'd love to bring the team on over there so that we could cover everything that's going on to Computex. We'll keep you posted as to whether or not that's happening. And I don't know whether or not UFD deals is happening. I've really like, we gotta work this out with Reese, man. I can't be just tossing to you as a segue and you're not there. Reese, are you gonna do UFD deals tomorrow? He's streaming right now. Hey, yo, you gonna do UFT deals tomorrow? Of course. Ha <laughs> ha, we got it. Hey, you, welcome back to UFT deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Monday, guys. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend and I've got some deals for you. Starting off with one of my absolute favorites, the Samsung T7 portable SSD. You can pick up the one terabyte version in either of the color variants for only $79.99, which is 43% or $60 off. And then next up, we have the Nanoleaf Line Smarter Kit. I really, really want some of these for my desk setup on the wall here, but they're not in South Africa, unfortunately. It's the story of my life, but you guys can have them for only $149.99, which is $50 off. And then last but not least, we have the Gigabyte B660M. And if you want to get really technical, it's the DS3HAX DDR4. But this Intel LJ7900 motherboard is going for only $99.99, which is $40 off. And that's it. Those are the deals. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brad for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, Reese. The deal you didn't have was Asus ROG Ally because it hasn't been officially unveiled with a price or any release date yet, but Asus confirmed confirming that it should be coming sooner than you expect, which obviously means nothing. It could potentially look at a Computex launch, which is definitely when Asus shows off a lot of their products. Computex has not been around since 2019, so we could expect a lot of companies to be really focusing on this time window for their launches and releases. I'm excited to see where this comes in at. There's been rumored and speculated price points of anywhere from $1,200 all the way up to $2,000. It really isn't quite clear. I don't think they're gonna come anywhere near the $400 price point of the Steam Deck, but I am very still interested in a high quality, high refresh rate, high output handheld gaming device. Let me know if you're going to sign up for the pre-order of the ROG Ally, which probably won't be enough to run the Lord of the Rings Gollum, which just finally got its PC system requirements. And it's a doozy. The minimum spec requirements ignore the CPU for right now. But on GPU side, you're looking at a 1080 or an RTX 2060, which they're saying is going to be good for 1080p medium, probably at 60 FPS. The CPU is really not not that robust an i7 4770 or Ryzen 5 1600, a four or a six core CPU. On the recommended side of things, it's even weirder. The CPU is an i3 6100 or a Ryzen 5 2600. I don't understand what's happening here, but then they're also recommending 32 gigabytes of RAM and an RTX 3080 with DLSS to get 1440p high with ray tracing turned on. The 3080 makes sense for 1440p with ray tracing. I'm just baffled by that i3 recommendation when the minimum is an i7-4770, which is going to be on par with a 6100. Why did they change it? But the thing they should definitely not change is the name of their collector's edition, which is going to be the precious edition. That's just absolutely perfect branding right there. And what's not perfect branding is Western Digital dealing with a ransomware attack with regards to their My Cloud service, which is where you upload your files. And now they've been stolen by a ransomware service. Western Digital confirming that this occurred on March 26th and that they are implementing proactive measures to secure its business operation to fix this from going forward. But the organization responsible for this hack is saying that they're requesting a minimum of eight figures before they hand over the data and that they've provided a sample in order for Western Digital to verify that this is actually the group that has hacked them with them saying, we only need a one-time payment and then we will leave your network and let you know about your weaknesses. No lasting harm has been done, but if there are any efforts to interfere with us, our systems or anything else, we will strike back. We are still buried in your network and we will keep digging there until we find payment from you. We can completely conceal this and make it all disappear before it is too late. Let us do that. Until now, you have been gracious. Let's hope that you do not keep going the wrong way. Cut the crap, get the money and let's both go our separate ways. Simply let us put our egos aside and work to find a resolution to this chaotic scenario. So Western Digital has not specified whether or not they're going to pay this amount of money. But according to the group, they have 10 terabytes of consumer data, which is 
definitely going to be egregious if somebody was using this as a cloud backup. There could be anything from personally identifying information, company secrets, or a whole host of other things that are out there. We'll keep you posted on what Western Digital decides to do moving forward. But Western Digital also not having a good time when it comes to the sales of their hard drives. This is not applying to SSDs, but HDD shipments are down 35% year over year. Companies like Seagate, Toshiba, and Western Digital are saying that they don't see really a change in their future projections with regards to hard drives. They think that they'll still be able to sell as many, probably not to the regular consumer, but definitely to data farms that are gonna need this moving forward, especially with all these AI farms that are pulling up, they actually will need more data. But Western Digital also losing the top spot when it comes to hard drive sales. Seagate is now back at number one between 15 and 15.5 million units sold. And Western Digital is down to 12 to 12.7. But you probably won't need a whole lot of hard drive space in order to play Half-Life 2 with path tracing because that's the latest update that's coming out thanks to Nvidia's RTX Remix. We talked about this last week. This is one of the big things that Nvidia announced with the RTX 4070 launch that kind of went under the radar. RTX Remix allows for all of the modern features like ray tracing, DLSS to get implemented into older games. And there is a modder who's been working on doing this with Half-Life 2. He's had a pre-production version of RTX Remix, but if you take a look, it looks absolutely gorgeous with the new path tracing lighting that's in here. The same type of lighting that's absolutely destroying GPUs in Cyberpunk's 2077 RT Overdrive. He's even gotten path trace refraction to happen when you're under the water in Half-Life 2. This is incredible. There are still some issues like Half-Life textures being borked, so he's had to retexture it himself. There's still a few things that aren't rendering properly. We'll leave a link in the video description in case you want to check out his efforts. I honestly am very impressed by the work that RTX Remix can do. I want to see more and more of this come out. I'm going to continue to highlight it here on Hot News. Let me know if you have any RTX Remix projects that you come across that you want me to show off here because I'm definitely glad to do it. And Montana is glad to ban TikTok because they're the first United States state to actually make that happen with their state legislature approving 54 to 43 to ban TikTok from their app stores with the governor still yet to sign. This will only go into effect in 2024, but will cost $10,000 per violated instance. This likely will undergo a lot of legal challenges over the next little bit until it actually goes into effect next year. And there's been a lot of discussion around how would they even do this? How are they gonna enforce that Apple or Android or anybody else it actually stops the downloading of TikTok on the app store? It's not quite clear. We'll keep you updated on how that moves forward. And Elon Musk is moving forward with a new AI company, OpenAI Be Gone. It is now XAI, the company being incorporated in Nevada, probably gonna be part of his X Corp, which is just gonna be the holding company for everything else that he's got going on. Elon Musk saying that everyone and their dog seems to be buying GPUs at this point in regards to the 10,000 GPUs that Twitter bought for AI stuff. It's not quite clear how XAI is gonna factor into all of this, if it's gonna work with Twitter, if it's gonna work with Tesla, or if this is gonna be its own standalone thing, especially since OpenAI took his money, said it was a nonprofit, and then went for profit, which definitely seemed to bother him. We'll keep you updated on the XAI news as it continues to develop. And what is developing is Nearby Share. This is the application on Android that allows you to share files from one phone to another. It was recently announced that it starts working with Windows where you can transfer files from your phone over to your computer. And now it's being developed as an app for macOS with Nearby Drop having limited feature sets with regards to Nearby Share, but you should be able to seamlessly transfer files, at least if you're on Wi-Fi, from your phone over to your MacBook that you use for work. This is definitely helping to bring down the walled garden that Apple has surrounding themselves. And you love to see every single move like that, which is why I like to see every single move that AMD does to potentially undo Nvidia's stranglehold on consumer GPUs because they're fine with how things are going. We talked about how the 4060 Ti is gonna be stepped down from what we got released previously, but AMD is bringing Rockham to Windows, which you might not know what that means. Rockham is Radeon Open Compute Ecosystem. This is AMD's open source competitor to Nvidia's CUDA system, which doesn't seem like a big deal that it's moving over to Windows. It's been available in server environments for quite some time. But the interesting thing here is that AMD released this information too early and put it behind a login so you actually don't have access to it. But they're gonna be bringing Rockham support not only over to Windows, but over to consumer cards as well. Being listed in this documentation was the 6900 XT, the 6600, and even the R9 Fury. And the reason this matters is because those have HIP support or the heterogeneous interface for portability, which actually allows AMD cards to run CUDA, which is one of the reasons why so many people stick to Team Green is because of CUDA acceleration and things like streaming and things like video editing, as well as other professional applications. Intel already has something that's been developed as an open source product.
project called Zluda, and now potentially AMD might be getting that on the consumer side on Windows, where a 6900 XT, 6950 XT would actually be able to run the CUDA library using HIP. It's not 100% clear that this is going to be rolling out in any sort of nearby time frame. AMD even pulling back this announcement from their own web page, so it's clear that they weren't ready to actually publicly announce this, but this could potentially dethrone NVIDIA as having to be necessary in a lot of environments. If you can use an AMD card to run the CUDA library, potentially not at full speed, but you're getting 90% of the way. You get a 6950 XT that costs about the same as a 4070, but is actually faster and then can actually run CUDA at more than what the 4070 could. Well, then you're eating really good gravy, my friends. I'm excited for what this could potentially mean. We'll keep you updated as this develops. Rock'em on Windows with hip support for consumer cards. That's a big deal. I want to see where this goes, and I want to see you back here for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow, my friends. Thank you.